G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. As uh, I'm continuing this off season where we go through each club in the AFL and have a look at what their best 22 might look like three years from now. Now, to clarify, again, like I've done in the other videos, uh, the purpose of this is not a real prediction as such. It's more just to map out what clubs might look like or playing lists might look like in three years. Once you take out the players that are likely to have retired, you can sort of see what gaps each club has and, and what strengths they have as well. Uh, I'm not going to be predicting the listings as such or uh, certainly not trades or draft picks or anything like that. So we're just mapping about or extrapolating three years into the future what clubs might look like. Now, I've done every club in the league um, in reverse alphabetical order. Today, we're obviously doing the Carlton Footy Club. And there's a playlist on this channel called AFL Clubs Three Years From Now or AFL Teams Three Years From Now. So you can go find that content for other clubs. I've also done a Carlton video uh, based on 2024, having a look at their best 22, their strengths and weaknesses. And you can find that in a playlist called uh, team-based videos for 2024 as well. First of all, I, I wanna point out that I think I'm uploading this on Boxing Day. Um, my timelines are a little bit messed up with my uploading schedule, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna see this on Boxing Day. And I'd hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. And again, thank you all for the support. Again, if you are looking for AFL content, this would be a great channel to subscribe to if you haven't already. And once again, like I did in the last video, I'll point out two very good, in fact, better than very good, football channels that do uh, speak a lot about Carlton in particular. So one of them is Blue Abroad. If you are a YouTube watcher that uh, is a Carlton fan, I'll be amazed if you don't know who Blue Abroad are. But if you don't, go check them out. And as well as Pommy and Oz, who does great general AFL content, but it's a big Carlton fan as well. So I'll continue to plug those boys because they do fantastic work. In this video, I'm an Eagles fan trying to analyze the Carlton and blues from afar. So let's crack into how we always start, and that's to look at what players are likely to not be on the list anymore three years from now with the rough target date, round one, 2027. So all the ages that I mentioned will be uh, by basically April 1st, 2027. So I've had a stab at six retirements that I think are likely, okay? Nick Newman will be 34, Sam Doherty will be 33, Adam Saad, Zach Williams, Mitch McGovern, and Jack Martin will be all 32. And uh, I think when you consider how many players are still gonna be in their 30s on the list after this, which I'll get to in a minute, I think those retirements are fairly justified. Maybe there's one or two there that could still play on, but I think with an aging list, they'll start to phase out some of those types as well. And there's a lot of back half retirements there, but we will get into that. So the next group of players that I'm gonna mention are players that I've got technically on the list or not necessarily on the list, but not old enough to have retired and yet they're 30 or above, okay? So one of them is Pat Cripps, Patrick Cripps, who uh, will be 32, th turning 33 that year. This uh, at a pinch might be his last year, I would guess. Uh, it's hard to tell with Patty Cripps. You don't feel like, you feel like he could still play well later into his career, but he has taken a beating over those years. So I'd say 32, turning 33, I've kept him in this video. Fantasia, Akers, and Hewitt will all be 31. I've still kept them available. Pitney, Sam Durden, Marchbank, uh, Chincotta, Charlie Curnow, Matt uh, Owies, and David Cunningham will all be 30. So that's a, a shitload of players that are 30 or above three years from now. So obviously they're not an aging list right now. They've got a lot of players in their prime, but in three years, there's going to be uh, a bit of a reliance on older players, but that's, that's fairly normal when you've got a team in contention like Carlton are right now. So let's crack into their best 24. I've been doing an extended bench for this just to flesh out the analysis a little bit more. What we're looking at here is the best 24 that I've color coded. So the colors are just sort of roughly indicate how confident I am that they're gonna be best 22 three years from now. Uh, if they're green, I'm pretty confident. If they're yellow, less confident, but it doesn't mean I don't rate them because at the end of the day, I still have them in my best 24. The numbers on the other hand, the first number uh, in the bracket is their age by round one of that year. And the, the second number behind the dash is my estimate of how many games experience they will have at that point in time based on, you know, uh, not so much injury. I've, I've taken away a little bit for everyone for the possibility of injury and suspension. Uh, but you know, based on how many games they're likely to get in between. Now, if they're a development player, they'll they'll have less. If they're best 22, I've given them 60 plus games, okay? So let's go through this team line by line and start with the back line. So I, I kind of pointed out before that uh, the the retirements that I've just pointed out, there's a lot of back half types in that. You know, Saad, McGovern, Williams, and Doherty. I know he plays a bit of midfield as well. Um, there's a bit of an exodus there. And so that highlights uh, perhaps one area that Carlton would want to address through you know either trade or draft over the next three years or so. But let's go through what we're working with as at this point in time. So the locks, Jacob Wiedering, obviously still gonna be there at 29. Um, and Brody Kemp, I think has emerged as a good sort of third tall defender who can sort of play on the dynamic type forwards. He can play 
small and taller as well, um, which is a nice versatile mix, and I think he's pretty safe to be there. The second uh, key back spot was a little less locked in as such. There's a bit of competition for March Bank, who I think is probably the next best bet, uh, but has obviously missed a lot of football with injury as well, and it's no guarantee that at 30 he'll still be there. Um, to highlight a few other ones that they've got uh, waiting in reserve, I've had Lewis Young on the bench there. Then they've got a couple of prospects like Dominic Akaway. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Chin Cotter is also a sort of taller uh, style defender. I think he's 194 centimeters. And there's Sam Durden as well. But out of that choice, I've gone with March Bank there. Uh, and then the medium types are a little bit more um, ambiguous, if that's the word, or a little bit more subjective, actually. Uh, Jordan Boyd, I think, is around the mark for the best 22 now. So in three years' time at 28, I still think he's probably a safe bet to be there. Uh, but I do have him in yellow because he's not that exposed yet. Billy Wilson and Lockie Cowan are the halfback flankers. Lockie Cowan's shown a bit at AFL level. Um, so I think given their lack of real depth in this area, or at least proven depth, Lockie Cowan seems like a relatively safe bet. That's why I've got him in green, if that doesn't make sense. Bitley Wilson, I don't know too much about. I thought it was a bit of a draft bolter. I think it makes sense that they drafted him given what I think their list needs are now. Uh, so there's a good chance, like obviously, hypothetically, if Carlton don't recruit anyone for their <laughs> back line, that Billy Wilson will be there. Uh, but obviously, I, I presume that they will recruit for that position going forward as well. Now, let's talk about the midfield spots here, okay? I've left Pat Cripps, obviously, in this team, uh, and the wings I've given to Ollie Hollands and Blake Akers. I'm sure Ollie Hollands will probably spend a bit of time on ball as well, but look who he's competing with there in Chera and Walsh. And Chera and Walsh will be in their prime at this point now as well, as will Tom DeConing in the ruck there. So from an age point of view, other than Cripps and Akers being over 30, there's a really nice blend of mids that will still be in their prime uh, and make them a very, very dangerous midfield. In fact, you know, it's arguably better in three years than it is now. So, moving on to the forward line, uh, we've got Elijah Hollands, I've chucked on a forward flank. Uh, again, there's the retirement of like Jack Martin and stuff like that. It's, it's up for grabs, and Elijah Hollands obviously was a top 10 pick a few years ago, uh, pick seven or something like that. And I've given him half a chance to be there on forward flank, uh, but we'll see. He is, he is a bit of a speculative one. There's been injury and lack of opportunity at Gold Coast as well. But the two talls are locked in. You've got Kerno and Mackay. Uh, Matt uh, Owies, who I think uh, actually had a really good year last year with 27 goals from 18 games. I think he's probably the most likely of the smalls, other than Jesse Motlop, who is a lock. He's an absolute gun. Jack Silvani, I think, makes this side because of his versatility and uh, ability to play as that second ruck and a third tall forward and, and you know, even more versatile than that, really. So uh, I think I think I like him in this team. Maybe he shouldn't be green. I don't know. I know he's fallen out of the team before. But, um, yeah, that, that's the best mix that I could find from a third tall point of view as well. So now that's left with the bench. So Cottrell, uh, you know, that, that was one who in the comments section of my last video, a lot of people nominated as someone that I undersold. So I put him in this team on the bench. Um, again, I'm not sure exactly where. Another versatile player. Uh, but that, that one makes sense as well. Matt Kennedy uh, is probably still in line with this team without too many young mids coming up from below. George Hewitt might have might have uh, been phased out by now. I'm assuming they would have drafted some more mids in this time. George Hewitt's probably the vulnerable one here. Lewis Young, like I pointed out before, is probably the next key back in line. Uh, but again, that could change. And the forwards, Orazio Fantasia, again, I've slapped him in the best 22 for 2024. But at 31, I don't think he's demonstrated himself enough as a reliable player for me to be confident he's in this team in three years. He absolutely could be, but I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. And it would be a great result for Carlton if, if, he, if he does because he is a d dangerous goal scorer. And Ashton Moyer, another sort of dangerous player with high potential that I think uh, is probably a, not a safe bet at all, but there's a chance that he really clicks and becomes a gun. So that's the mix I've gone with to cover some of the players that I left out. I left out Pitney in, f in favor of the Jack Silvani second ruck option if they've got De Koning in this team. Um, I talked about uh, Akway and uh, Sam Durden. Matthew Carroll was another player they just drafted. I uh, went with Billy Wilson because he was taken much earlier in the draft. David Cunningham still around the mix. Um, Jackson Bins, Hudson O'Keefe is a ruck prospect. Jack Carroll, again, sort of unproven speculative types that uh, again, as midfield depth, I'm not too sure what to make of it yet. That might just still need to be a position they draft for when you consider the ages of these players in three years. Then a couple of other sort of medium to small forward types. Uh, Corey Durden was unlucky in this team, but again, like he could be there. He could be there instead of Ashton Moyer. I'm not too sure, um, but I did like Ashton Moyer as a draft prospect. Fogarty's in there, or Fogarty, however you say it. Uh, I'd left him out of this team. And same thing with Harry Lemmy, obviously a prospective or speculative rather, uh, key forward prospect that was taken last year, 2022, I think. 
Um, that could be around the mark, but again, he's competing with Mackay and Kurnow, and we're assuming they're fit in this scenario. Um, but again, maybe after Mackay and Kurnow, they need to consider who that key forward is. So that's probably something to draft in the next three years. But overall, what I would do for Carlton here is that I still see this as a team that's in contention, looking at the list profile there, provided they can backfill some of those vet veterans uh, with some decent trade and free agency options. So I'd probably be looking at trading or at least dr- spending a high draft pick sooner rather than later on a half-back flanker, if they don't unearth someone like a Billy Wilson. Uh, but I'd say medium defensive types is, is a need, whether that be trade or free agency or, or draft, whatever. Uh, I'd probably be considering their tall forward depth, or like, well, their prospects rather, um, just, just trying to get one that's going to be ready in like three or four years from now. Maybe that's Lemmy. They could probably draft another one. Key backs, on the other hand, they seem to have a lot of those. Same thing with Rux. They, they seem to be well stocked, and I'm a little bit too far out of the equation to to. Pro- project how good you know Alex Murkov and Hudson O'Keefe are going to be let alone Dominic Akwe I'm not too sure but there seems to be the positional depth there overall however I, I do think there's there's a lot of players that will still be in their prime in three years and so if Carlton get this right and make the right strategic moves around trade uh, and obviously the draft you know, the draft never goes away but if they can trade in some good quality defenders um, unearth a couple of speculative talents you know Elijah Hollands if he finds his potential other than that like a lot of the talent there is safe they're safe bets like Chera and Walsh in particular obviously it's crazy to think Walsh is still kind of a prospect not really but uh, but in three years he will only still just be in his prime then so uh, it's crazy to think and I think this Carlton side has a lot of potential to achieve a lot in the next three years but even in three years I think this team is well placed so there you have it, guys. Those are my thoughts on the Carlton Footy Club in three years. I think even though there's a lot of um, aging done over the next three years, I know that's a weird way to phrase it, but in three years, there's going to be a lot of veterans on the list and a, and a few players have left. I still think they're in a good spot, um, which probably sets them apart from some of the other contenders. I'll be interested to do Brisbane next. That will be next in the series. Um, that might come out tomorrow as you're seeing this anyway. So as always, I welcome your input. Always trying to learn as much as I am trying to um, educate or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but as always, I appreciate you watching. I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.